Hi, welcome to Coding After 30. In today's video, we're going to take a look how ChatGPT3 could help you learn to code faster. Don't use it to get the answers, but use it as your peer programming body that's going to help you along the way to help you learn how to code. The most important part here is that if you're watching a lot of YouTube videos where they're telling you it's the end of development, it's the end of coding, it's not. Don't, not even ChatGPT4 is going to take our jobs just yet. But with that being said, it's an amazing tool for you to use as one of your resources. Today, we're going to use it with another app called Code Wars, where you're able to go and try to complete cool JavaScript challenges. Now, of course, you could ask ChatGPT3 just to show you the solution, but that's not the approach you're gonna take. And I'm gonna show you instead how you can use it as a learning tool. So let's jump into it. In this example, I picked something that I've never done before. It's called Memoized Fibonacci. And let's take a look here. Here we have a basic function, which is called recursively. Regardless if you know what that is, that is okay. But let's take a look here. What it says here, the Fibonacci sequence is traditionally used to explain tree recursion. And then it explains what this code does. This algorithm serves for educative purpose, but it's tremendously inefficient. Not only because of recursion, but because we invoke the Fibonacci function twice. The right branch of the recursion, Fibonacci N2, recalculates all the Fibonacci numbers already calculated by the left branch, which is here. The algorithm is so inefficient that the time to calculate any Fibonacci number over 50 is simply too much. You may might as well get a coffee or take a nap. And it's true. If you put this function into your code editor and try to run it and put anything above 40, it's going to take forever to take. So the idea here is for us to figure out how we can cache the generated Fibonacci sequence in order not to have to use or recalculate it a second time. And this is where it explained this challenge. For this particular kata, we want to implement the memoization solution. This would be cool because it will let you keep using this tree recursion algorithm while still keeping it sufficiently optimized to get the answers very rapidly. And then it'll tell us the trick of the memonized version is that it will help us cache the data structure, most likely in an associative array that kind of gives us a clue where we will store the Fibonacci numbers as we calculate them. When a Fibonacci number is calculated, we first look if it's up in the cache. If not, they will calculate it and put it in the cache. Otherwise, will return the cache number. And our job is to refactor this recursive Fibonacci function that uses memonized data structure to avoid deficiencies of tree recursion. Can we make this work? So there's a lot of things that stand out. And so the point here is not to solve this right away, but break it down into parts. So this is where chat GP3 comes in. Of course, I could paste it and say, give me the answer which it will. And this is an example of what not to do because we're not learning anything. We're asking chat GPT-3 for the answer. So I could say refactor the function below to be, and what's that complicated word? Memoized, memoized, will be memoized. And then we'll do this and see what it does. Let's see it. So chat GPT-3 thinking. And here's an example of the Fibonacci function refactored to use memoization. So let's take a look. So it says let memo, it creates an object. And what we're doing here is we're starting the function here and we're checking if n is zero or n is one. If so, return n. Then we are checking if memo n, return memo n. If not, we set memo n equals Fibonacci n one plus Fibonacci n two, return memo. And it also gives us a description, but let's say I didn't know what this was. I could also say refactor the above code to include comments explaining what each line does, right? And it'll go ahead and it'll create it. See, check this out. It creates an object to store previously calculated values. Then it shows us our base case. Let's say I still don't know what a base case. Then we check if the value is in memo, in memo. And if it is, we will create a new item with the new item. Otherwise, we'll return the value stored in cache. So it's kind of starting to make sense, but let's say you lost. And so here's the thing here. Like I know this would work, right? We could check it out. We go into our code here and we'll plop it in here and we say test. And look, we pass all the tests and I could click submit and call it an end here. But the point is I didn't learn anything. So this is not what we want to do. So here's how I would use the 
chat GPT-3, instead of doing what we did here to ask for an answer, start breaking the problem into parts. So where should we start? So let's say like me, you found this problem and there's few things you don't understand. I don't know what tree recursion is. I don't even know what a recursive function is. I might not even know what Fibonacci sequence. So instead of getting the answer like we did before, what you could do is start breaking this problem. So let's start and learn about Fibonacci and see what it actually is. Please explain Fibonacci number sequence. What sequence, I guess I should spell better, what it is and how to create one. So here it gives us the answer. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers which each number is the sum of two preceding ones, usually starting with zero and one. The sequence goes as following, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. So how do we get these numbers? So we'll take 0, 0 plus 1 equals 1, then we take 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 plus 2 equals 5, and so on. The Fibonacci sequence can be generated in several ways one of which is through a recursive function like one present above. So it kind of tells us this is where we recursively taking the previous number and the next number, adding them together to get next Fibonacci number in the sequence. And it kind of explains to us the base case for the function and it tells us what the input is. I'm still not sure what a base case and I don't even know what a recursive function, but at least we now know how to calculate the Fibonacci numbers. And here it kind of shows us the sequence. So we have first two numbers, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, and so on. So now we know what a Fibonacci sequence is, and we kind of have a better understanding of what we want. And so next, what we want to do is we know that we're working with a recursive function. So we could ask, please explain what is a recursive function in programming. And so it tells us a recursive function in programming is a function that calls itself in order to solve a problem. Recursive functions are used to solve problems that can be broken down into smaller similar problems. When a function calls itself, it does so with a slightly simpler version of original problem known as base case. The function continues to call itself each time with a simpler version of the problem. And so, yeah, okay, I kind of get it. Maybe I need some clarification. Explain to me what recursive function is like I am five and use a simple count example that counts from one to n. And so it gives us a better answer. Hopefully my five-year-old brain can understand it. And so here we ask for clarification. Explain it to me like I'm five. You know what I'm saying? So it says a recursive function is like a game we play to count numbers. Imagine you're counting from one to n, and every time you get to a number, you call out the number and ask someone to count the next number. And this person will keep calling out numbers until they reach n. So if I say one, then the other person says two, then the other person says three, that's you calling the same function recursively. For example, let's say you want to count to five, you start by saying one, then you ask someone to count the next number, which is two, and then that person asks another person to count the next to three, and so on until number five is reached. So you're literally calling that same function recursively. And this is similar to a recursive function in programming. A recursive function is a function that calls itself to solve a problem, just like how you each person is counting game calls the next number. It starts with an initial value and then calls itself to solve the next step of the problem until it reaches the end of the problem. Here's an example of a simple recursive function. So here we have a function, we provide 10, n equals one is the base case. If so, it'll just console log n, else it will console log n as well, but it will take that count 10 and minus one. But when it reaches to one, it will end. And so let's test out this function. But before we do that, let's kind of see what it says. This function takes a single input parameter and uses base case n equals one to stop the recursion, right? So if we hit n equals one, that means we're done and it won't do anything. Otherwise, if it's not equal to one, it will continue to count down, calling itself and taking the value from the previous call and subtracting one. And this is important to notice this example of the function will call itself n minus one times. The number of times that is going to be called is determined by the input given. So let's try this example. So in the code editor, I'm gonna paste the code and I'm gonna say count to five and let's run the code. 
node index.js and here we go five four three two one and they count it recursively using our recursion function so now we have an idea base case if it reaches base case we exit the recursion otherwise we continue so in this example if we provide count to 10 and run it again we'll get 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and so forth. And we could see here that if we reach 1, it will exit the function. So now, not only do we know what Fibonacci numbers are, but we now know what a recursion is. So let's take a look at the previous prompt and see where to go next. Now, looking at the prompt, we know what Fibonacci sequence is. We now know what a recursive function is. We understand what a base case is. And we now know when it hits its base case, it will exit the recursion. Otherwise, it will continue to call itself. And in this case, they're calling the function twice, which is very inefficient. So in our case, is to use memoization to store a cache data of the initial Fibonacci sequence and check if the data exists or not to get the answers. But I don't know what memonization is. So let's ask chat GPT-3. What is memonization in programming? So memonization is a technique used in computer programming to optimize the execution time of a function by caching its results for a given set of inputs. When the function is called with the same input again, the cache result is returned instead, instead of recalculating or recomputing the result. This can significantly reduce the overall runtime of your program, especially for expensive function that called multiple times with the same input. Memoization is often used in dynamic programming, a technique for solving complex problems by breaking them down into smaller subproblems and reusing solution to common subproblems. That kind of gives us an idea. And as we saw in the previous example, when we first got the solution to the Fibonacci memorization problem is that we created a value that we cached and then we compared the cache value versus the value that exists. If it does, don't recalculate and instead use the cache value. But let's see if we could provide an example for us to better understand this. Please provide a simple JavaScript example that explains memoization. And here's a simple example of memoization in JavaScript. We have a function called add x plus y. So it'll basically do a sum of two numbers. But what we want to do, if let's say we did 2 plus 2 equals 4, then we did 5 plus 6 equals 11, and then we did 2 plus 2 again, which equals 4. What we don't want is we don't want to recalculate 2 plus 2 because we already done it. And so here's a function called memoize add which will basically create a key of additions we pass. So we have X and Y. And so if we do one plus two, it will save one as X, two as Y in memory. And if key is in memo, right? Meaning if this key exists, because we previously called this function with those variables, it will just return the cached memo function because it's going to be saved in this object here and if it doesn't exist it will add it and so here we are we could try this simple example in code so let's paste that example here and walk through it so here we have our simple add function where we could add two numbers and get the sum now here we have our memonize add function. And now we know what it is. It's basically being able to take an item and cache it where we're going to save it in this object. So the point is, if we already calculated one plus one and we try to calculate it again, instead of running that calculation, it will just go ahead and use the cache data, which is pretty awesome. So for instance, if we do one plus one, the first time around, it's going to save it to the key and it will check, does our cache have that key? If it does, it's gonna return the save data or the cache data. In our case, when we first run one plus one, it's not going to exist. And so what it's going to do, it's going to create that entry in memo after it calculates the sum. So here, if I do one plus one, one plus one again, one plus one again, what is this going to do? And we could delete these comments because they're not relevant for this example. When we run this, here we could see that we have one plus one saved in cache. And 
we get the answer. So we have the key, which is based on the numbers that we pass to sum, and then we have the answer. So the first time it runs, it goes ahead and checks if it exists in our cache. If it doesn't, it will go ahead and run the add function and add it to our cache. But if we add one plus one again, it will hit here and be like, hey, that key already exists. Instead of recalculating the function, go ahead and return the save data. So if I do one plus one, one plus two, one plus one is going to be served from cache, one plus two is going to serve from crash. So this from add, this is going to be from add because it's happening first time. This is going to be from Mimo or from cache. And this is going to be from Mimo from cache, which is, which is awesome. So now we know what memorization is. This is pretty cool. So going back to our original example here, looking at the prompt, we now know what Fibonacci number is. We now know what a recursive function is. We even know what memoization is. So if we take a look at the code that was returned to us by chat GPT-3, which we prior did not understand and know, now we totally get it. We understand. And we were able to figure this out by using chat GPT-3. Now, I'm not saying you should look for solutions, but do that second part that I did where we went step-by-step step breaking things down. So if we take a look at the code, now we understand what is happening. We know that this is a recursive function. This is the base case. Whenever n is either equal to zero or one, we will return n. Next, we check memo and we pass the key of n and we check, did we previously calculate that value? If so, instead of running this calculation again, we just return the cache data. And if it doesn't exist, that means we didn't do that calculation yet. So go ahead, run this calculation and return MIMO. Oh my God, this was a ridiculously long video, but I hope you followed along and you were able to see the power of ChatGPT3 and how it's literally your digital instructor, your teacher, your peer programming assistant, whatever you want to call it. I call it my girlfriend sometimes. You know what? Don't worry about it. But now you have a strategy that you can use to learn to code, which is very involved. You're not just reading the material, but you're asking questions. And I think that's the piece that was missing. For instance, when using Google, you're not able to ask clear follow-up questions or even getting answers directly from Get Stack Overflow. So I hope you found value in this video. It was really, really long, but I think it was really, really useful. So if you didn't smash the like button, go ahead and smash it. And if you hated this video for whatever reason, you could hate on it too. And if you want to see any other topics, let me know in the comments below and I'll see everybody later. Take care.